Hey there, this is Stephen Feuerstein here with another PL SQL quick tip. This one on using indices of with for all and sparse arrays. Let's dive into some code. Okay, so let's start with a traditional for all statement. I've got an associative array of employee IDs declared by type and then the variable itself, L employees. I populate three elements in that collection with sequentially allocated index values, one, two, and three. Then I can use my standard, as I said, traditional for all statement for all index value in one to the count of employees, give all those employees double their salary. Now I would like to note that of course, in this simple case, you could just do the update statement. You don't need the for all statement, but assuming that you do need the for all framework, that's how you can use for all with a in clause from one to the count or from first to last, just like a numeric for loop. And then when I run this code, I will see three rows updated. So that works just fine. But watch what happens when my collection is not sequentially or densely filled. I'm going to have a gap between one and three. Two is not defined. And when I run my script, oh, I get an error. Or a 22160, element at index two does not exist. So that's the problem. When I use the for all statement with the standard in range of first to last, then every element between first and last has to be defined. What do I do if there are gaps? Well, I could get rid of the gaps. I could write some code to shrink down or compress my array so that there are no empty spaces. But instead, you can use the indices of clause instead of the standard first to last syntax. Let's take a look. With indices of, I would simply say, for all index values in indices of a collection. Now in the simplest case, which is what you see here, I'm simply indicating that my indices of collection is the same collection as my bind array. As I'll show you shortly, it doesn't have to be that way. And when I execute this code, notice I've got an element defined in index value one, 100 and 500, definitely not sequentially allocated. When I run this script, I don't get an exception. I simply see, oh yes, I've updated three rows just like I did before with my sequentially filled collection. So indices of simply says, look in this collection, use only those index values that are defined to drive the processing of the DML statements. Nice. Now, as I said, this is the simplest format. A more complex format or usage of indices of is shown here. Now, in this case, I've got a very different situation. What I've done is still use my employees array, my bind array. That's what I'm gonna to use to drive the DML processing. But in addition, rather than saying indices of L employees, I've got a separate collection, my index collection. Essentially, this would be applicable in a situation where I have a very large set of elements in my bind array, and I have some sort of complex formula that determines which of the elements in that collection I actually want to do the updates for. So. I create a second array. In this case, it's an array of Booleans. It really doesn't matter what it's an array of because it's only going to look at the index values in that indexing array. And then I'm going to define elements at specific index values, false, true, null. Again, it doesn't matter. Just what matters is that these elements, these index values are defined. And then I can execute my for all statement referencing that index array. And notice I can also add a between clause, only one in 600. So I bet you can look at this code and fairly quickly see that when I run this script, I should only be updating two elements, two rows, not three, because 799 is outside the range of 600. Now notice I'm doing a select statement. Find me all the employees who make more than 10,000, or sorry, whose salary is equal to 10,000. I'm gonna update a few to set their salary to 10,000. And then I'll run that same query again and see where we've gotten. I run my script. And it shows me that initially I had four employees making $10,000. I ran my procedure. And then afterwards, I have six employees who are now earning $10,000. So that's the indices of clause. If you have an array that's not densely filled, if it's a sparse array, then either you can get rid of the gaps, which is what you had to do prior to 10G release two, when this feature was in introduced, or you can use indices of to, to pick only those index values that you want to apply the DML statement to.
And there's even another feature in PLSQL, the values of clause, that gives you similar functionality as indices of with a slight twist, and I'll cover that in a separate video. All right, let's take a look at some takeaways. So the for all index low value to high value syntax only works with densely filled bind arrays when everything between the first and the last index values are defined. If your bind array has gaps, if there's something between first and last that is undefined, then you must either densify the array, get rid of those gaps, or use indices of. I recommend using indices of. Indices of can reference the bind array itself or a different array depending on how complex your requirements are. And there's another clause in for all called values of, which is similar to indices of with a little bit of a twist, less likely to be useful, covered in a different video. So some resources. First of all, check out my for all values of video concerning another way of working with sparse arrays. And if you're not that familiar with for all, check out my introduction to for all. I referenced the 10 G underscore indices of files, which you can download and use yourself from my demo zip. So go to the Oracle learning library, oracle.com slash OLL slash PLSQL, click on demo zip, and then you can run the very same scripts that I've run myself in this video. Hope you learned something new about for all and happy PL SQL coding.